Uh, I want to start um, trying to take you on the process I've been as being chair of Cycle Bar for five years. And when I became chair, I also became a student for transport and urban design. And when we try and understand how or why the society is very car dependent, we also need to understand how society also restricts our ability to do things. So we understand that somebody in a wheelchair can't cross a road if there isn't a drop curve. But we also need to recognize that a child that wants to cycle to school but is prevented by their parent because the roads are too dangerous is also limiting and part of what is known as the social model of disability, you know, where society prevents what you are more than capable of doing. And this, when I joined Cycle Bath, was the logo. And it is a man on a bike, wielding a banner, charging at a hill full of vehicles. And this is now the logo for Cycle Bath. And what it shows is that you're trying to think beyond the bicycle. What you're saying is it isn't the fact that cycling is hard or impossible for people, and for many people with disabilities, it's easier than walking. It is the fact that we still have a problem with our way we've designed our road and public realm to enable people to use these types of modes. And if we then take an example of Bath, and we analyze the road system, and this is quite complicated, so I'm going to get it quite quick, is what this does is audit the roads and try and work out which ones are missing certain types of infrastructure. So black are missing cycle tracks for the volume and quantity of the um, traffic on it. And if we cull it and we remove all of those roads that are bad, so we're basically getting down to the blue ones, all of those routes which are isolated and socially unsafe, and all of those routes which somebody in a wheelchair bike cannot access because of a set of steps or a set of bollards that are too narrow, you end up with this. And this is Bath for most people who are not cycling. And this also reflects in the fact that one in a hundred kids only cycle to school. And of people in living in Bath, Bath residents, that cycle to work, it's one in 20. But of those, one in four are women. It's not 50-50. And we have to recognize that the social model of um, disability has created this for us. But there are ways we can think about cities, where we can try and make them more livable, where we can take the idea that we need to prioritize Road, um, cycling, walking, and public transport, and try and make it just that little bit harder to get around by car. Not impossible, but recognize that that's not what we want people to do. And this approach is what low traffic neighborhoods is about. It's about identifying residential groups or roads, grouping them together, usually bordered by main roads, and then removing the rat running, removing that facility as a convenient cut through. Now, and this is um, being used in Walthamstow in uh, London. It's called the Mini Holland Scheme. And the investment there wasn't just in low traffic neighborhoods. There was also some route network improvements. But if we look at one particular little village area, Walthamstow Village, they, what they did is they played. They did, weren't sure it would work. So they used traffic regulation orders to block off a couple of things and change, put some bus gates in, just stop it so that you couldn't drive through there anymore. And then once it kind of settled and people understood what they wanted, they then put in a different scheme that actually fixed a lot of the issues that were initially raised. So they played with the streets, similarly to what New York did with um, Times Square, where they weren't sure it would work, so they used some filled um, oil drums with cement and just put them in place and just worked out what would happen. And this has resulted in some phenomenal changes. Now, 32 minutes extra walking per week is what the residents do now. Only nine minutes of cycling extra. But it's got rid of 10,000 journey, car journeys within the Holland scheme. 
And more significantly, they analyzed it and found that it also added seven months of life to every resident in the area just by putting some rocks or a planter with a tree in the road and saying, no, this is not a convenient rat run. But it's taken six years. And if we look further afield and we look at Ghent in the Netherlands, they took this idea of creating a circulation plan, this idea that we want cars to move around the city in a specific way, and we do not want them to use residential areas. And they did something in one year. They took that whole idea, created low traffic neighborhoods, and then reduced the amount of residential traffic by 56%. Overall, a 12% drop in traffic in one year, an increase of cycling by 25%, and an increase in public transport use by 9%. These are profound changes to a city. And we can apply that to Bath. We can take the view of Bath, we can put the traffic layer on from Google Maps, and we can kind of work out our distributor network. And from that, we can actually identify areas where we should be putting these low traffic neighborhoods. And we can drill down. And this has got the Abbey in it. It's also got, this is Great Pulteney Street. And we can identify a low traffic neighborhood. And by putting in a bus gate, and then we can put in a roadblock and changing the direction of a road there, the whole of that area calms down. Because I don't know about you, but that's one of my favorite cut-throughs to, uh, to ignore the traffic on Bathwick Street. Yeah, and it's that sort of behavior we need to stop. Yeah, this is a residential area. We can take a more, more residential area on the outskirts of Bath. And we can take this area western. And we know there's a little bit of a rat run going down there. And it makes it hard for people to walk or cycle in that area. And we can put two bus gates in, into the area. But the other thing we're doing here is we're asking to put in, say, some rocks in a road or, or some bollards. And we're just saying, look, we don't want you as a resident conveniently taking the route that you want, snaking your way through that residential area. We want you to get as quick as possible to a distributor road, to an outside road. And in doing this, you create areas where kids can play in the streets. And if we take this further, we could fix the whole of Bath. We could create these fixed neighborhoods where walking and cycling, and the community was more connected to each other. But we still are left with a problem, which is the distributor network, the main roads. We need to fix those. And for that to happen, we need to understand, we need to move more people on these roads. And we need to prioritize the ability for people to walk and the people to cycle. And cities around the country are beginning to put in continuous footways yeah, um, and also taking out parking on these main roads and actually putting in protected cycle lanes. And we started doing this on London Road, on one side anyway. On the other side, there are 23 on-street car parking spaces that prevent an east-flowing cycle lane. And this is, this is the key thing. They're playing with, you're playing with the streets. And it's not for people like me to ask you, uh, ask the council to do this. this. You can work with your residents' associations, with your local residents, with your councillors, and you can start asking them to take this seriously and start looking at the health benefits that this would bring to the city. And I just want to show you one last picture. This is Broom Hayes. If anybody knows Bath, it's at the bottom. There's a, a lower Bristol Road. It takes you into Oldfield Park. And this, at the moment, is closed because they're refurbishing the very, very lights down there. And there's a man pushing his child along in the middle of the street. He feels comfortable doing it. And it's that experience that you create by closing off roads. Thank you very much.